Today, I'm going to bring you Thomas Frank's fantastic 4-3-3. And on average, we scored about two and a half goals a game. But at its peak, we managed to score three goals a game. It's sort of designed for sort of a mid-table Premier League team, as Brentford are. But of course, we are going to cover all aspects, being worse teams than that, and obviously including one powerhouse. Let's get in to the video. So first up is going to be Brentford, obviously, in the Premier League. His current team, a team predicted to finish in 11th place. Now, we had a very good season, securing top four just over Arsenal, Villa, and Tottenham United and Chelsea. Ivan Tony, you could always bet leave a like for that one. Um, he would score a high amount of goals coming in with 22. Rico Henry not only picking up the most assists at 10, but also picking up the highest rating with 7.35. 67 league goals scored and only 30 conceded alongside of zero red cards makes up for quite a good set of stats for the Premier League with a team like Brentford, to be fair. What made this really, really good is the fact that we did win the Carabao Cup and also we've got the FA Cup final to play. That's not a mistake. I have saved that obviously to play live in the video. I've not done that in quite some time. So I thought, Do you know what? We'll have some fun later on and we'll play that in the video so potentially going to be a double win in english cup season the future will tell going over to some of the stats we're not going to feature many of them in fact any of them because of course we're not going to have as much good stats as the top boys in the league we've got so many teams that are going to outperform us in every aspect of the game possession wise we're not going to be on there most goals we're going to be ranking sick which isn't too bad considering look at the teams above us i mean it's absolutely incredible most points per game we're going to be quite consistent in in fourth place as well a lot of the things we are going to be fourth place in the passing i'm not going to be too favored in because obviously we're not really playing that way anyway but as in terms of a general season i'm not too fussed about it because although we're not going to be looking at ourselves that highly up in the stats where we've finished and we've already won a trophy and we're in a final of a trophy against everton a team we should be able to beat I'm quite excited. Going over to the data hub, though, we are going to be looking at a 1.76 goals per game, a conceded at 0.79, just over 14, or actually edging towards 15 shots per game, an 84.9% pass completion, and a 77.79 tackle win ratio. Going over to some of the team stats with Brentford, I will show you the relevant team because it makes more sense. We're not going to be scoring loads and loads and loads of goals, but don't get me wrong, we did actually do quite well. Ivan Tony picking up 22, 10 for Mbomo, Wiesa coming in with 9, 9 for Dan. Damsgaard, Janelle coming in with eight as well, six for Kevin, Norgard with five, four obviously for the centre half, and Rico Henry also contributing four alongside a Jensen. So what's happening here is, although we've not got one player coming in with 40 goals, we've got a lot of players coming in around the 10 goal mark, a lot around the five to six. So we're just spreading the goals out nicely between the team. And with a team like Brentford, that's what you almost want to be doing, because if a player like over Ivan Tony does get injured, for example, it's quite handy knowing you've got other players that can bail him out. In terms of the assists, it's very similar as well a lot of different players getting involved in those assists being Rico Henry and Bomo Janelle again seven for Baptiste Hickey with six a fantastic fullback by the way Tony even contributing as well so it's nice to see everyone getting involved and not purely reliant on one player obviously the striker is going to be the star man in terms of the goals but at least even without him we can put the ball in the back of the net next is going to be Bayern Munich the powerhouse of the video and just I only use them because I thought it would actually suit the system quite well and judging by the results it really did as we do with the treble the Bundesliga, the Pockel against Leipzig, the Super Cup against Leipzig as well. Actually, the treble against Leipzig because they finished in second place as well. Harry Kane picking up 24 goals, a couple more than Ivan Tony. Musiala with a 7.43 highest rating. Joshua Kimmich coming in with 22 assists. And it is going to be the new man, Kim Min Jae, coming in with a 93% pass completion from the back. 96 goals scored in the league with only 22 conceders and alongside of just the one red card. And this is more like it. We are now going to feature in seven of them stats. 2.38 points per game 96 goals scored in the league 649 one off 650 shots for 147 shots against us most dribbles made at 631 and picking up 18 clean sheets alongside of just 22 conceded. Going over to the data hub, we're going to be edging towards that free goal game of Mark. 2.82, a conceded at 0.65, just over 19 shots per game, an 86.8 .8 pass completion, and a tackle win ratio coming in at 78.48. So what we're seeing here is a very consistent team that scores quite a fair few goals, defends really well, and definitely can spread the ball about. Up next is going to be AZ, as I don't really know how to say it, but it is going to be them. They are predicted to finish in fourth place obviously three better teams in the dutch league final ajax and psv as you can see they are going to be the teams just behind us and it was very very close literally by one point we managed to scrape the league title which i was not expecting to be fair though 
Pavla Diz coming in with 32 goals, probably one of the best scorers we've had entirely on this tactic test. And so just proving that even with some of the weaker teams, we've got to get better goals out of some of the players. And whatever leagues you're playing in, this tactic is going to vary because the game plays them so differently. We're going to see a 7.41 coming in from Bommel with the highest rating. And it is going to be Wolf, eh? Wolf coming in with 16 assists. 78 league goals and only 25 conceded just means basically... Again, we're outscoring everyone. Not the best at defending, but up there with the likes of Feyenoord, Ajax, and PSV Eidenhoven. And zero red cards again, so there is a little bit of discipline in this tactic as well. Of course, we don't just win one trophy, we win two. We also pick up the Dutch Cup against Feyenoord. So to be honest, almost a flawless season. And going over to the stats, we are going to feature in four of them. It is going to be nice and simple. Going to be the top four, 2.32 points per game. Most goals at 78, the fewest shots against 159. And also the most shots coming in at over 620. And lastly, a team predicted to finish in 7th place over in the Skybet Championship. That is going to be Sunderland, but we were only 3 games from going invincible. Winning 31, drawing 12, and also losing 3 games, which we are going to be against Norwich, Leicester, and Blackburn. Norwich and Leicester can be expected. Maybe Blackburn, we should be doing a little bit better against, but to be fair, they did finish in 3rd place, so obviously, they've got a little bit about them. Jack Clark comes in as one of Sunderland's best players by far, coming in with 37 goals. Daniel Ballard pick up a 7.41, and it is going to be Patrick Roberts coming in with 27 assists. In terms of the league stats, we're going to dominate everything. 138 goals across the games we played and conceded just 46. And also, somehow, we do win the Carabao Cup against Liverpool, which is a big big sort of you know surprise to be honest with you about that one obviously the FA Cup we're not able to win but playing this way I actually did play that final myself and I did go in with that cautious variant because I thought I was going to get cooked by Liverpool but essentially we strangled out the game quite well and got a result at the end so into the cup final we go it is going to be against Everton we're playing that lovely 4-3-3 you can see the lineup here and in my opinion it's quite a strong 11 Everton to be fair to them also have a very good strong lineup in a 4-2-3-1 formation with big man Calvert-Lewin up front who is very good inside of this game and I'm a little bit nervous about defending against him but do you know what we're going to try and play this game live hopefully it goes well let me know in the comments if you want to see more live games being played because obviously I usually just show a bunch of highlights because I'm like surely guys love to see goals right but if you'd rather see like a cup final or a derby game let me know in the comments because I do read them all the time and I'll tweak the videos to how you guys want to see them but this game I'm expecting to be partly quite quiet to be honest with you because it's two teams which aren't going to go full guns blazing. Two big occasions for both teams, Brentford and Everton. And I'm expecting it to be sort of maybe a 1-0, possibly a 2-0 win as we should be 1-0 up there, really. Not too much we can do. It's a great play from the tactic. Just a poor finish coming in from Wiesa there. We have got Ivan Tony on the bench, so it's a very good player to bring on if we need to do so. And we are playing this ball around quite well, to be honest. Flecken playing like a Manuel Neuer type of role. And now we are just building up very, very well, actually. It's a beautiful goal. This could be into Hickey down the right-hand side. He's going to take his time ball inside into Jens it could be a penalty it should be a penalty and it has been given it has been given so let's just see we can go one the up here it's going to be Wiesa on the penalty inside of 25 minutes he's going to step and he's going to score top left corner we're going to take it it's a great start that is going to be his 10th goal of the season so not exactly the most standout season because obviously Ivan Tony was playing majority of the games but Ivan Tony had a little bit of a knock so I thought Do you know what we'll start Wiesa in the cup final and so far it is paying and Everton now might be all over the gaff they might be panicking Jordan Pickford is a player that I know I can get under his skin. He has got a very, very weak mentality sometimes, and he just makes mistakes for fun. So hopefully we can get another goal before half-time, and this Everton team will literally collapse, because a nice, comfortable final would be quite nice to play in, wouldn't it? Let's, let's just be honest. Although for the video, maybe penalty shootout would have a bit more drama, and that's what I mean by Jordan Pickford. He loses his head down the middle, 2-0 inside of 26 minutes, and I'll be real, boys, this cup final might even be done. I'm not going to say it's done officially, but at the moment... Everton are offering nothing. We've had 65% of the ball. They've had zero in everything and 36% possession. They're offering nothing, absolutely nothing going forwards. And we are dominating the game as we always do. We love to see that playing it into Henry on the left-hand side. A good overlap and run there is eventually going to get used. Got to cut it back into Henry, back into Janelle, across into Jensen, into Damsgaard. And I'm sorry, guys, anyone that's questioning the tactics, you're seeing them getting played right now. It's absolutely incredible scenes. Great passing, great finishing. That's one of the best goals probably scored as of recent times, especially with a Brentford team. I mean, come on, man. Absolutely incredible. 
and that is probably one of the best halves we have had inside of this inside of this season at least so over to the second half then the lineup is going to remain unchanged simply because we've not really put a foot wrong and I'm a, I'm a sort of a manager where I don't like to take off players unless they're injured obviously but if they're playing well I'm not going to do anything and as you can see on the right hand side everyone's playing quite well to be honest with you i mean there's no real stinkers maybe norgard maybe in bomo but no one's too tired to carry on at the moment it's not it's not as if they're putting any pressure on us they're, they're still yet to obviously have a highlight so i'm not too worried i might even just roll out the same 11 um i will i mean we're freeing the up it is what it is i think the game is going to be done and Everton, fair play to him for getting to a cup final, but the display they've put on is almost embarrassing to actually see. Absolutely disgraceful from Everton. And this is going to be, it is going to be a cup win. Live on video. We love to see it. There you go. A 3-0 win. And we're not going to watch the entire trophy lift, but up the break. Of course, now we are going to go to your favorite part of the video after winning the trophy. That is going to be the tactical breakdown. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to leave a like and definitely subscribe. And you can now check out my second channel, which is going to feature console and mobile tactics. So if you are a fan of this one, go over, show some love because we're going to be regularly posting on there as well. But let's go over and break down this tactic. So it is going to be a super keeper coming in on support on more direct passes. This keeper is not afraid to go along with his balls, as we have seen in them highlights. He's going to knock it up usually to Ivan Tony to get the knockdown. If you have got a really small striker, might be worth removing this instruction in all honesty. Going over to the fullback on the right, it is going to be on support, on run wide with the ball, shoot less often, get further forwards, and also stay wider. We saw in the cup final especially how aggressive the fullbacks actually were, and they do play a big part in the success of this team. A ball playing defender on the right comes in on defend, simply on stay wider, and on the left hand side, it's going to be a central defender on defend, simply on stay wider as well. So good cover for when the fullbacks are going to push up as they are going to do quite often. On the left-hand side, it's going to be exactly the same as the right-hand side. So just again, a fullback on support, on run wide, shoot less often, get further forwards, and also stay wider. And that is going to complete your back four. And it is going to give you a nice and balanced back four, which is going to have quite attacking fullbacks, but not to the point where we're not going to be too defensively vulnerable, even across all of the saves, really. We didn't concede too many goals to the point where it affected the results we were getting. We still had very impressive results with everyone. So I wouldn't change it unless you've got really poor quality fullbacks that simply can't attack in the middle we're gonna have a dm coming in on defend this guy is simply here to sweep up any balls you know is a very basic player but a much needed player in this 4-3-3 and because we've got such a defensive player there we can afford to have a box to box who is going to be looking to dribble more get further forwards and move into channels a very aggressive box to box in this team that plays a massive part in helping this front three create chances and talking about creating chances this is where this guy comes in the advanced play simply on support having him on attack in this variant is way too way too expressive way too attacking so we're going to simply have him on support i do want to quickly thank all of the names coming down the screen these are going to be new or existing patreon members we've got over 1200 of you guys now there's over eight perks for joining the patreon today you get access to all three of the tactics in today's video you get early video early tactic release you get priority in your tactic and rebuild requests one-on-one -on -one help I tweak your tactics, giveaways, and so much more. Probably about 10 perks, to be honest. You can check it out in the description and also in the comments. And moving over to that front three, we're going to have an inside forward on the right on attack, on sit narrower, and exactly the same on the left-hand side. Why is they on sit narrower? That's a great question. Essentially, it's because that just... It, it's a lot more room for the fullbacks to overlap into basically they're almost going to be in this position here meaning the fullbacks cannot run wide and not really collide with them or sort of stack too much on either wing and to finish it off the pressing forward coming in on attack on the default instructions over to the team instructions it is going to be a custom vertical tiki tacker a custom vertical tiki tacker style on the positive the positive mentality we are going to look to pass into space because we saw that a lot in the highlights a bit more of a direct approach does not harm this brentford team at all we're going to overlap left and overlap right really get them fullbacks involved as much as we can the directness is actually going to be set to standard um or depending on the team you're playing with so with brentford i had it on standard but with majority of the teams i'd actually favor a shorter style so this is why it's important to watch the videos as well, not just simply download and dip, because I do obviously make a lot of changes depending on the team I'm playing with. With Brentford, 
it was direct, but the other teams were all on shorter. So I am going to go over shorter for the sake of this video because the majority of the tests were done on it. We're going to go over a slightly higher tempo. We're going to run at defense and, of course, my go-to mixed crosses. In transition, we're going to see quite a few instructions coming in. We're going to have the counter press, of course the counter. This is where things do get a little bit different, though. We're going to take long goal kicks and we're going to distribute to the flanks. And lastly, out of possession, we are going to whack up to the high press line of engagement, the higher defensive line, the Thomas Frank way, more often on the trigger press, and of course, we've got a press and forward, so we need to prevent short goalkeeper distribution. I wasn't going to show another game, but just to break it up a little bit, this is going to be the Carabao Cup final against Manchester United, and the only reason I'm showing you is because of how dramatic it was and the impact downloading that attack and tactic actually has. Because you're going to see later on in the game, you probably can see the spoiler coming up here, but we actually had one of the most dramatic games I've ever seen. Great goalkeeper from Onana there, by the way. Um, we'll ignore that. It was a very good game between us and United and pretty much all the action that actually made it that title come inside of that second half. I'm um, in the extra time, sorry. So at this point here, extra time comes in. They're now 2-1 up in the 100th minute bang on from a penalty from Bruno Fernandes. I then thought, do you know what? We've got a full sender. Go to the attack and variant. At least get penalties, right? We come in in the 109th minute. A great ball in. Back stick. It's a poor clearance from Varane. Into Norgard. Out wide. Into Henry. Into him. And back into the game. At this point, I was buzzing. Now, I changed from attacking back to the default tactic, but obviously it didn't go through because the ball was in play. So we were still on the attacking tactic. We win the penalty and we win the whole game. I mean... It's banging. Now, going over to that famous attack and variant, which literally did win me the game, to be honest with you. The goalkeeper is going to remain the same. The fullback, and in fact, anyone across the back line does remain the same. So, we're not going to waste your time on that one. Just double checking. Nice and simple. The DM is going to be taken off of the defensive duty on supports on more direct passes, take more risks, and tackle harder. When we are attacking, I'm not against this DM literally hitting the ball forward, going long, because we are literally trying to get as many chances as we can. Whether they work or not, get the ball up the pitch. We then go with two creative players. So we've got, a, 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 we've got an AP, sorry, an advanced playmaker on the left on support on Jerome Moore and run from position. And next to him, a Mazala comes in on attack on shoot less often. So a very attacking midfield, but obviously made all the difference, even against a big team like United. On the right-hand side, both of the players, on the right and the left, both inside forwards are going to remain exactly the same. And the big change, it does go slightly out of being a Thomas Frank tactic at this point, because he does have a press and forward, in my opinion. But the advanced sword is by far the best strike role in the game. So if you are desperate to try and win a game by any means, you want to be using that. Team instruction-wise, it's going to be the same tactical style, but the mentality is going to be on attacking now, one up from positive, set to attacking. And the only real change is going to be, well, a couple of things, really. So passing to space is going to remain... Overlap left, overlap right, of course, is going to stay. Standard with the directness again. A higher tempo on this occasion. Mixed crosses is always going to remain the same. But on this occasion, we've got run at defence partnered with the Be More Expressive. In transition, one simple change that is simply going to be distribute quickly. Nothing else needs to be changed in this variant. And lastly, a couple of changes in the outer possession. We're going to max out the trigger press and we are going to get stuck in. Now, if you are talking last five minutes of the game, you're losing 1-0. Maybe you're drawing. You need another goal for aggregate, for example. You can deploy the much higher defensive line but be aware at that point you are full send of the game over to that defensive variant and of course this is to go in against some of the bigger teams or to even defend a game out the goalkeeper remains untouched both of the fullbacks are now going to be literally on the default so no instructions nice and simple they're not going to get further forwards so they're not going to be too attacking at all in this tactic which means both of the center backs that is a central defender on the left and on the right are now only on the default instructions because of course we don't need them staying wider in the middle the dm comes back in on defend of course simply on the default instructions the box to box comes back into the team as the default variant was but no custom instructions now simply on the default and then we have a Carrillo, a, I can't even say that, a Carrillo, I always butcher that name, coming in on support. I don't really use this role too often, but it worked really well in the system on pass it shorter, take fewer risks and shoot less often. On the right hand side and the left, two inside forwards, both on support, both on sit narrower and to finish it off, the pressing forward off attack on support. Nice and simple. Now over to them team instructions. It's going to be still the vertical tiki taka style on the positive on this occasion. The positive mentality. Now, there are going to be a few things changing. So with this system, it's going down a much more possession-based route and much more sort of get a feel for the game sort of vibe. We're still going to pass into space. We're not going to overlap left and right on this occasion, though. And we are going to play out from the back because although we haven't got it selected in the other variants, this is a bit of a risk-free sort of way of playing. So playing it out from the back, although that might sound a complete bit of delusion, we're not going to be looking to just 
hump, literally thump the ball out wide now. We want to maintain the ball and playing it around the back, as in getting it to a centre back, is actually quite a safe option. Therefore, we're going to go much shorter with the directness. We're going to go with a slightly lower tempo, dribble less, and mixed crosses. So this is going to give you a nice sort of slow paced game where you're going to pass the ball, get a feel for the game, and if you're doing well, go a bit more attacking. But if you are going in against a Man City or Liverpool, sometimes going in with a much more of a composed head is exactly what you need. Transition, we're going to have a few instructions selected that is going to be counter, slow the pace down, distribute to the centre-backs and take short goal kicks. So again, this, although we are playing it to the centre-backs, some people might think, Josh, that's a bit more risky. It honestly isn't because distributing to the flanks is very good. But if you're doing that against a big team and you're not winning it on the flanks, you're going to be giving away possession all the time. So playing it to the centre-backs is quite a, it's quite a risk Free option. Lastly, the standard defensive line, the high press line of engagement more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So a lot more defensively secure, a lot more balanced as a tactic as a whole and definitely one I'd recommend going in against the bigger teams with. And that is going to give you guys three variants of fra Frank's? Thanks. Frank's fantastic 4-3-3, a tactic which has been widely requested on this channel now for two or three weeks. I do apologise about the delay. We've got so many videos, but as always keep the comments coming because I like having a big list to do. And if you guys have enjoyed today's video video be sure to leave a like drop a little subscription we're trying to push for 20k by let's go let's go march why not we'll go, we'll, we'll go march for 20k we'll see what we can do and i'll see you boys in the next video